Right, in this clip, we are going to the next uh, part of uh, chapter 6. Yeah? We are going to look at the compounding frequency, yeah? how frequently you compound interest. Yeah? So, the, the frequency will have an impact on the interest rates. Yeah? So, we are going to look at the influence on the interest rates in this section. Yeah? That arises from compounding frequency. Alright, let's uh, go to the next slide. Okay, yeah, previously, okay, this is an introduction. Yeah? Uh, previously, the given interest rate was for one compounding period, usually a year. Yeah? And the payment was made every period, also usually a year. Yeah? So, it was yearly interest and then compounding was made once a year. That, that means compounding is done only once a year. And the payment yeah, that you make uh, for... Uh, for example, annuity yeah, or any other payment is only at the end of each year. Okay, so that was the basic assumption. Yeah, that was the uh, constraint yeah, that we uh, had before this. But now, okay, the given interest rate is usually for one year. Okay, this is the stated interest rate. There are three things now. Yeah, the interest rate and then the compounding period. Yeah, it can be less than a year usually it's less than a year yeah example example a month okay previously it was a year now the interest rate is given for one year but the compounding period is less than a year yeah okay uh, for example a month and the payment yeah may be made at every different period for example weekly yeah so the compounding period may be different from the payment period you know, or the payment frequency so there are two things. Eh? Compounding frequency means how many times you compound within a year, and then the payment frequency. Yeah, so this will be different. Yeah, so it can be different. Not that it will be different. Okay, previously the, we assumed that all of this will be the same. Yeah, meaning only yearly. But here we remove that assumption. Yeah, or that constraint. Yeah, so we can have anything. Yeah, there are three things here: the interest rate. Okay, that will usually be given for one year. Compounding period, okay, this is usually less than a year, and the payment, okay, can be for a different period. Yeah, for example, you, you can have a weekly payment or quarterly payment, okay. A weekly means less than a month, right? Quarterly means more than a month, yeah, it can be either less or more, yeah. So, uh, these are the complications that can arise from this compounding frequency, yeah. All right, so based on Okay, so how do we operate? How do we solve such problems? Yeah, so based on the payment period, okay, we must bring this condition to something pre uh, we used previously. Yeah, because all these must agree. Yeah, so what are the three things that you must uh, must agree? Yeah, first, based on the payment period, okay, you need to determine the equivalent interest compounding period. Okay, you cannot change the payment period yeah, or the payment frequency. Okay, how frequently yeah, a payment is made uh, in a time value of money problem. Yeah? So if the payment is, for example, weekly, then you need equivalent weekly interest rate compounding period. Yeah? Uh, then that's the first thing. Yeah? So this is number one. You must this number one will determine number two. Okay. Then this number one and number two must determine the term of compounding periods. This is quite simple. Yeah? The term or number of compounding periods. Okay, uh, in a formula. Yeah? So these three things must agree. Yeah? So if this is weekly, this must also be weekly and the number of compounding periods must be number of weeks. Yeah? If this is month, this must be month and this must also be months, yeah? number of months. Yeah? If this is quarter, for example, then this must also be in quarters and this must also be number of quarters. Yeah? And like what we did previously, if this is yearly, this must also be yearly and this yeah, will also be yearly. Yeah? So this, if it's yearly, then it goes back to the first example here yeah, that we have done previously. Yeah? But uh, in real life, you'll, you'll have this problem. Yeah? So in order to solve this problem, you need to convert. Yeah? You convert the interest rate, compounding period or the compounding frequency. Yeah? All right? The actual compounding frequency may be different, but the computational compounding frequency may be different yeah so you'll see this in an example then the number of compounding periods here yeah, will also be uh, revised yeah it's not yearly yeah so let's look at an example and then you will see yeah 
So this is the complication uh, that we are going to look at in this chapter. Right, now we come, uh, these uh, differences yeah, in frequency, uh, the compounding frequency gives rise to three types of interest rates. Yeah? Previously we had only one interest rate, now we had three types. Yeah? The first one is called effective annual rate or EAR. Yeah? This is a very important interest rate. Okay, This is the actual rate paid or received. Yeah? It can be uh, interest rate that is paid if you borrow or interest rate that you receive if it's an investment. Yeah? After accounting or after considering for compounding that occurs during the year. Okay, so this is a very important yeah, uh, rate. Okay, and this is usually used to compare to alternative investments or financing. Okay, not only investment, yeah, investment or financing, yeah, both. With different compounding periods, yeah, so that you need to compute the EAR and then use that for comparison. Yeah. If it is investment, you will choose an investment that gives you highest EAR. If it is a borrowing, financing then you will choose the financing that gives you the lowest EAR right? because you want to pay the lowest interest rate yeah? annual interest rate if it's an investment you want the highest uh, annual investment yeah? effective annual rate yeah? uh, annual interest rate okay so that's the idea behind EAR right? then the second type of interest rate is called APR or annual percentage rate now, this is the annual rate that is quoted by law. This is the law in the US. Yeah? Here, there is no such law, but usually yeah, uh, the interest rate is stated uh, per year. Okay, So, this is the stated interest rate or the nominal yeah, interest rate. They call this the nominal or the stated interest rate. Okay, And what is the nominal? It is just used to, uh, to promote, for example, to indicate the different types of loan or investments. But the actual interest yeah, may not be the annual rate yeah, or annual percentage rate. Yeah? Okay, by definition, what is APR? Yeah? APR is actually period rate. Okay, we'll see what the period rate is a bit later. Yeah? This is the definition. Period rate multiplied by times means multiplied by the number of periods per year. Okay, so what is period rate? Yeah? Period rate is the interest rate applied for a single period of compound. That means you in your if you compound interest once, okay, what is the period you compound the interest for? If, is it weekly? Is it daily? Is it monthly? Or is it yearly? Yeah. So this that is called the period rate. Yeah. So the the period and the rate. Yeah. The interest rate applied for that period. Yeah. And note that this is a single period of compound. Yeah? That means uh, the period rate must be one single compounding. Okay. Then if you use that that period rate multiplied by number of periods. Number of periods here means number of times interest is compounded in a year. So if you uh, you multiply these two, you get the APR. Okay. So therefore, given this definition, we can revise this. Yeah. So or re-express this. The period rate is actually APR divided by the number of periods per year. Number of periods will be number of times interest is compounded in a year. Yeah? Okay, so the last point here says uh, a caution. Yeah? Never divide the effective rate. Effective rate is APR. Yeah? Here you use, sorry, EAR. Yeah? Effective rate is EAR, not APR. Yeah? You, uh, to get the period rate, you take APR divided by a number of periods. Don't take EAR. Yeah? So EAR is not the way to do it. Yeah? So it will not give you the period rate. Yeah? Okay. Let's summarize what we have seen so far. Yeah? So therefore there are three rates. One is called period rate. The other one is APR, annual percentage rate. And the third one is EAR, effective annual rates. Yeah? So we start with a given period rate, R. Yeah? We use the R that we have used before in the time value of money formula. R is the interest rate, yeah, and that interest rate actually refers to the period rate, yeah. The only difference before this is the period rate is usually the yearly rate, yeah. So that is the period rate, and that means uh, where M, okay, here then we can compute R. Once given, sorry, compute APR, yeah. Once given R, you can compute the APR, okay. Where M, you need to know M, yeah. You need to know R and M. M is the number of compounding done per year okay how many times you compound yeah? this is called the compounding frequency m is called compounding frequency yeah so 
the formula is this APR is equals to R multiplied by M yeah uh, so once you know this formula this is the formula how you determine APR okay likewise given APR you can compute R if you know M yeah so you just reverse this okay you express in terms of R APR divided by M will be R yeah so uh, this is how uh, APR and R they are re uh, uh, related yeah they are related by M yeah or the number of compounding done per year right then given R you can also compute EAR yeah how do you compute ER effective annual rate this is the formula ER is equals to 1 plus R raised to the power of M yeah the number of times interest is compounded per year because that will give you the uh, interest factor for one year yeah one plus R is the interest yeah interest rate factor for one period then you compound this yeah you raise this to the power of M so this will be the factor for one period yeah no, sorry one year yeah this is for one year minus one will give you the rate yeah the rate for one year yeah this is called the effective annual rate all right now given uh, given R we can compute AR therefore given AR we can also compute R yeah? you just reverse this formula here okay we express this in terms of R so you want to express this in terms of R what happens you take 1 plus yeah? you bring this one over to the side it becomes 1 plus AR then you you raise this to the power of 1 over M yeah here it's M so it becomes 1 over M then you minus 1 yeah, on both sides yeah, because we have 1 plus R here you minus 1 on both sides and you get this value here yeah, R is equals to this so these two appears like different formula these two is the same formula okay just express differently if you like these are two sides of the same coin and yeah, this is the heads and this will be the tail yeah, but it's the same value yeah, same formula likewise here okay this is you can consider this as the head of a coin this is the tail of the coin yeah so they look different but the it's exactly the same formula or same value yeah all right so let's apply this yeah so before applying you know that APR with APR we can determine R and with R you can determine EAR and with EAR you can determine R and then with R you can determine APR yeah so these are the three rates that we are uh, concerned with them yeah? and we need these three rates yeah? and we need to understand these three rates and this is how the three rates are related yeah so usually AR and APR they are related by R yeah so before jumping directly from AR to APR or APR to EAR you have to go through R the period rate yeah so this is important to understand yeah let's look at an example and this will make things clearer yeah okay now what is the APR if the monthly rate is 0.5 percent yeah now this 0.5 percent is the period rate yeah because it says monthly rate this is the period rate R okay and then uh, what is the APR yeah you want to know the APR if it is monthly rate you want to know the annual rate so how many months are there in a year so M is 12 yeah that means uh, interest is compounded 12 times in a year so 12 times 0 0.5 is 6 percent yeah so this is r multiplied by m so this is apr is that okay right what is the apr if the semi-annual rate another example then yeah? semi-annual rate semi-annual means you uh, compound the interest only twice in a year yeah semi-annual yeah so it's 0 0.5 this is the r okay period rate and yeah? this semi-annual rate is the r okay uh, or the period rate okay 0 0.5 then m is 2 based on semi-annual we know that m is 2 because there are two semi-annuals in one year okay here m is 12 because there are 12 months in a year yeah so here it is uh, 2 2 times 0 0.5 is 1 percent so apr is 1 percent here yeah so these are similar examples okay but here you are given uh, the R and you know the M you can compute the APR yeah, for this now we reverse this what is the monthly rate we want to determine the period rate if APR is 12 percent with monthly compounding yeah? monthly compounding tells you the M how many months are there in a year 12 yeah 
and this is APR is 12, so APR divided by M, you get R. R is